Hello and welcome to the Reapers with me, Tanky. So what have we got here for you today? Uh, the guys over at Elegoo have kindly sent me over the Saturn IV for review. Uh, they haven't asked me for any favourable comments or anything on this, so everything is my own personal opinion and completely honest. So let's have a look at this, this machine itself. So it's in the similar dimensions to the uh, Saturn III that was released previously, uh, but it does have some interesting new features. Um, as you can see, it's got this lovely green cover over it at the moment, and it is also a full metal construction on the base, and also with the back where the Z-axis is currently housed. Now this lid is actually a flip open lid uh, as you can see here um, uh, but that does mean that you need to have a bit of extra space behind the actual machine to open up the lid else uh, it won't open fully. Uh, it would also be nice if they'd fitted some sort of handle to the front of this because you will get it covered in fingerprints or potentially resin because resin printing is very messy. It has this new vat as well with um, funnel lips on the corners uh, to help you drain it out and uh, this new bill plate and that uh, is there to help with the self-homing function. Uh, everyone's calling it a self-leveling function but it's not leveling, it's homing. And that's got uh, springs in it as well to ensure it's nice and flat on the screen. Unlike the four Ultras, uh, this doesn't come with the drip tray stroke bib um, to catch any drips off the, the drip tray and that is one big problem with the, that. Uh, you got that nice big screen down there in the, uh, the corner. Uh, different orientation uh, but it's still very clear to, to use and actually quite nice. Uh, as you can see here, I have fitted my own heater um, because it is quite cold in the UK and that's just to help keep the resin nice and warm to aid with the printing. Um, and behind that is a mount where on the Ultra 4 it would have the AI camera, but that isn't fitted on the, the 4. Now this print bed itself is nice easy release it can be operated with one hand but the design of it does create a lot of mess with the, these drips and, and that's a big downfall um, I, I'm not the only person that's recognized this other youtubers have as well and you know it does create the mess especially not having that bib and uh, you always clean up with a, a bit of rag uh, just to make sure everything's kept nice and tidy and you're not gonna cause any mechanical failures on the device itself. Now, unlike the 4, this doesn't have any networking capabilities, so you still do have to get your prints onto the machine with the USB stick. And it's on the same side down here as the on-off switch and the power cable. The actual LCD settings themselves are pretty much the same as the Saturn 3 with being able to move the Z-axis arm up and down, carrying out a tank clean, as well as doing a calibration test which just lights the screen up so you can actually see what's going on with it. And you also have the function to, to carry out this new device self-test, which is actually very, very handy because it lets you know what's going on before you even attempt to print and would you know spot any potential mechanical failures uh, whether that be something jamming up the z-axis height the screen not functioning properly through a, a cable becoming disconnected or something and yeah that, that's really really good to know and it will carry this out when you first turn the machine on or when you tell it to now the, the build volume on this is very, very similar to the Saturn III, except for you have lost a bit of the, the build height and that's because of this new build plate. As we continue to look through, you can go into your settings where you can have a look at turning the, the beep speaker on, 
altering the temperature sensor in there to be Fahrenheit or Celsius, all the firmware upgrades and everything. You also have all the standard contact details for Elegoo. And then there is also the ability to change language, but there's only two options, either English or Chinese. And that, that's it. Now, you, it's got its normal print area, which you can go in and uh, you know run your prints off at the same as you would on a, a Saturn III. And that this is a another high quality resolution image that comes off here, and it works exactly the same. Now, one thing that was a big disappointment um, was the fact that you can't do a calibration test where you slice your, your models into various different sectors on on the plate itself, and you can then individually calibrate the resin on there. Speaking of resin. Um, there is the handy little fill mark, which I, I pointed out just now, and the printer itself carries out a resin detection test whenever it, it starts a print. And this will automatically stop printing if it detects that there is too much resin in the vat. Now, unfortunately, I did have an issue with this one because it's a pre-production model, and it wasn't detecting the correct amount of resin when it was in. This has now been resolved out with firmware updates because um, I, I worked with Elegoo to, to sort that out. And so you shouldn't experience any of this uh, at all, which will be handy. So as you can see, this is now starting to go through that uh, resin detection process. And you'll see it start to slow down as it gets closer to the tank itself where the, the resin's held. And you, you'll see it stop as it just detects whether there's enough of the resin in there. And then it will, after that short pause, continue to move down to carry out the auto homing process. Um, I'm not sure why everybody in the industry is calling it auto leveling when it's, it's clearly not. But this is really good so that you know that you've got enough resin in there to at least carry out the, the print that you need to. And the, the way this auto homing process works is through those springs that I mentioned earlier in the build plate. So it ensures that it's got enough pressure on the plate where everything is, is nice and super level. And speaking of the build plates as well, it's unfortunately too large to actually fit into the wash and cure stations. Uh, like you can see the one at the back here, and because of that, you will have to take the prints off the print bed before you actually pop them into the wash and cure basket to then clean it all out. So one thing I, I forgot to mention is that um, this did come with a couple of transport screws in here that uh, you'd need to take out and replace with the actual knurled screw, screws to actually use the printer properly. So let's begin by looking at the actual quality of the prints that come off this uh, Saturn IV. So here we have the supplied Rook, um, which comes on the USB stick. And as you can see, it's all come out very nice and clean and crisp. You know, the, the less rings there, you know, there's no blurred edges on it. And you can see all the details that are popping out really, really nicely. And uh, yeah, this is a really good indicator of the type of prints that you'll be uh, expecting from this. So as we're all aviation nuts, as we won't be here on the Grim Reapers channels, um, here's a, an F-14 that uh, I've printed out in that, that cartoon style, a bit like those old Subaru images that used to, cartoon images that used to come out when I was a kid. So as you can see, this has got, even though it's cartoon, uh, styled it's got really really nice details on it and uh, you've even got the point that the wings do themselves move as you can see there and you know who doesn't love an f14 but uh, i'm really impressed by how clean and crisp all the lines are on this wait did somebody say an f4 well, unfortunately, I couldn't uh, get a, a print for a Phantom, uh, but here we have an F4U Corsair. 
Uh, once again, you can see everything is really highly detailed, even in this cartoon style uh, of print. And yeah, every line is nice and crisp and it just highlights everything that this machine can do. And it is really, really a, a fantastic machine to work with. Bar all the, uh, the minor niggles that I, I've highlighted previously. Now, I couldn't do these aviation models without doing one of the most impressive aircraft that was ever created, the SR-71 Blackbird. Now, this thing is huge. Um, and every, all the models that you've seen here are printed solid as well, so they are all a solid piece of resin. Um, but you can see all the details on here. You, there's a bit of pitting from where the supports were because obviously this is a very heavy object. But you see all the striations and corrugations that were on the original Blackbird, for, which would allow the fuselage to expand and contract during high speed. You can see all the rivets that are, are down the fuselage. It is a, a fantastic level of quality from this printer. So, you know, bar the, the little niggles that uh, I've mentioned already, um, Elegu, I do believe, have missed a bit of a trick with this range of printers where they haven't supplied a heater, which would really help in these colder climates like we have in the UK. Uh, but they are releasing a separate mini heater that will fit in this and uh, future models and previous models as well. Uh, now, the printer itself is... $267.99 um, at this particular moment in time, which does actually make it cheaper than the Saturn 3s. And yeah, that is a, a welcome addition. But, uh, you know, given these little niggles and the fact that just for $100 more, you can get all the extra added features like the tilting VAT, the Wi Fi capabilities the calibration printing where it splits the, the bill plate out. I would, you know, if I could afford it, go that extra $100 more and get the Saturn IV Ultra. But if you can't, this is a really good machine anyway. It's just you, you're missing those little bits of icing on the cake. And, uh, you yeah, know, I would highly recommend this one, but I just, knowing that the Saturn IV Ultra is there, I'd always go for that one over this one. But it is a really nice machine and you know, well done Elegu for, for pumping this, this one out. So I've been Tanky for the Grim Reapers and I hope to see you very soon.